and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create your own custom palettes and gradients using the colors within your image. I'll be using GIMP 2.10.8 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course before we get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always we have tons of GIMP video tutorials and how-to articles so definitely check those out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing from beginner to pro photo retoucher Udemy course and you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and you'll get some awesome GIMP extras in return and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is one of the images I'll be using for today's tutorial. This is from Pixabay and this is the other image that we'll be using and I'll link both of these in the description and these are both free of course. All right let's get started here and you'll see that I've created two different images. Both of these have color palettes. Uh, this one has it at the top, this one has it at the bottom. And color palettes are just a cool way to extract the colors from your image. It helps you kind of understand what the main colors are going on in your image. In this case, we've got sort of this orangish, peach almost color with some burnt umbers in there. And you've also got some grays going on and some blacks. And these colors really contrast with each other and it allows you to see why the image works so well color wise. And then moving over to this image, it's completely different. A lot of primary colors, a lot of very bright colors, very saturated colors, just makes this image overall very colorful. And so we've got two totally different sets of palettes here. And I think this is a cool effect to lay the colors of the palette out like this. This is an idea I got from a Twitter account that lays out the color palettes of various movies. It sort of grabs the scene from a movie and then it lays the color palette out like this. I just thought it was really cool. But aside from creating these color palette visual representations, you can also use the colors you extract from your photos to either add those colors to other elements such as text or shapes or whatever you want to add to your images or to recolor artwork or maybe you just want to save that color palette so you understand the colors that were used in that particular photo. So there's many reasons you can use or reference a color palette but let's go ahead and get started extracting these colors. So I'm going to go to file open recent since I did open these photos recently and I'm going to start with the photo of the Indian girl dancing and I know she's Indian because it said it in the title of the photo and there's a few different methods we can use for extracting the colors and putting them into a color palette and then turning that color palette into a custom gradient so to start we do want to open the color palettes dialog so I'm going to go to windows dockable dialogs and then choose palettes and that should open your color palettes here over on the right as a dockable dialog. So we've got all of these built-in palettes to start that come with GIMP by default, but maybe you don't want to use a previously defined palette. You want to create your own, especially based on the colors from the image you're using. Well, to create a new palette, all you gotta do is come over here and click the create a new palette icon. And then we're gonna name this Indian ceremony, maybe Indian color ceremony. And right now this is just a blank dialog. There's nothing going on in here. But what I can do is I can come over here and I can click to create a new entry. And what this is actually gonna do is it's going to create it from my foreground color. So right now this is just a random color. It's not a color that I grabbed from the image. So what I can do is come over to my color picker tool and make sure that my use info window option is checked here. And then I can click and drag this color picker around and you'll see that my color picker window right here is going to display a fairly large representation of the color that I'm trying to select. So as I click and drag, I can kind of keep an eye on this and see what colors I'm selecting here. So once you get to a nice color you like, let's say for example this one right here, you can go ahead and release your mouse and that'll pick this color. And by the way, I have this set to RGB percent as the color space that I'm viewing this in. So this is giving me red, green, and blue as a percentage. And then it's also giving me the hex code, which is pretty useful. But anyway, once you have the color you like, come over here and click to create a new entry. And now the color that is your foreground color, which is the color we just selected with the color picker tool, is going to show up over here in our custom color palette. So we have our first custom color here. And we can rename this if we want. So I could name this bright purple, for example. And that way we have labels for our colors. I'm not gonna do that for every color, but just so you guys know, you can do that. And once you've picked your first color, you can just move on and just continue to find colors that stick out to you. So I'm gonna really just find all of the really bright colors that stick out for me. And I'm just gonna to click to create new entries as I find colors I like or as I land on colors I like. So I'll go with this sort of greenish turquoise. Then we've got this blue color here, so I'll click on that. And there's this sort of deep red right here. And then there's a brighter red. 
And that's one thing about palettes. Uh, it's really up to you what colors you ultimately select, but sometimes it's good to select a range of the same color. It can kind of allow the colors to gradually fade into the next color. There's a nice bright yellow deep in here. So I'm just gonna select that. And I'm not really particularly doing this in any order. Um, here's an even brighter yellow there, so I'll click on that one. And then I'll just go with this black color here. So there's obviously many more colors in here that I did not select, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna leave it there. So now that we have this color palette, the question is how do we get this into a custom gradient, which is the second part of our tutorial. And the answer to that is pretty simple. Just remember the name of your palette title here. So we have Indian Color Ceremony. So now what I can do is come over here to our palettes tab and right here we have our Indian color ceremony custom palette that we created. All you gotta do is right click on here and you can come down here and you've got some options here, one of which is palette to gradient or you've also got palette to repeating gradient. I'm just gonna go with palette to gradient for now. So I'll click on that. And now actually I have my gradients tab open down here by default. Most people have this open as a dockable dialog by default when they first open GIMP. If you don't, you can go to Windows, dockable dialogs and click on gradients and that'll open that up. But now you can see our Indian color ceremony colors we selected are down here as a custom gradient. So if I come over here to my gradients tool now, I can come down here and I can choose this option, the Indian color ceremony option as our color palette that we want to use or as our gradient colors that we want to use, I should say. So we've got all of these pre-selected gradients and then we've got the one we just created right here. So make sure you have that selected. And then you can change the shape to whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to keep this linear and I'm gonna come over here to our layers panel, create a new layer, and I'm just gonna name this first one gradient. Make sure the transparency is set to fill width and click okay. And now we can demonstrate what our colors look like. So here are the colors we selected, and this is just as a standard linear gradient. And we can, of course, come over here and change the layer modes. And this just allows us to play around with these colors a little bit. And of course, I do have a whole tutorial on what each of these layer modes does, so definitely check that out. But anyway, I'm gonna hide that for now because we're not gonna really use that. What I wanna do is I wanna create that sort of palette that I laid out here that I showed you guys in the beginning. So I'm gonna create a new layer, and I'm just gonna name this color palette. Make sure the fill width is set to transparency and click OK. Once I've done that, the next step is I wanna create a rectangle selection area. So I've got my rectangle select tool, and I'm just gonna click and drag and create this rectangle selection here towards the top of my image. And I just roughly drew this to fit to the image, but if we wanted to be more precise, I can go to image, guides, new guide by percent, and we can start with vertical and I'll just go with zero first. So that'll create a guide at the very beginning. And then image, guides, new guide by percent, change this to 100 and click okay. So that'll create one over here. And then I want one on the top as well. So I'll go to image, guides, new guide by percent, change this to horizontal, and we'll go with zero and I'll click okay. So now we've got guides at the top border here, and now I can click and drag this and that allows me to snap my selection to those guides. So we just have a bit of a more precise selection area here. And I'll just increase the width of this a little bit. All right, once I have the area where I'm gonna create my color palette, I can grab my gradient and I still have my custom gradient color selected here. Now I can just draw this gradient at the top and if I hold control, it'll draw this in straight line mode until it snaps to that right end of the gradient or the right end of the selection area, I mean. So now we've got all these colors, but they're not separated in rectangles with hard edges or anything like that. Uh, they just sort of blend into one another. So it's not as effective in representing our color palette. But what I can do with the new feature that came with GIMP 2.10.8 is I can create hard edges at each color separation. So I'll click on this midpoint here come over to blending and change this to step. And I can just do that down the line here and it only works at the midpoint. So if I click on this one here, which is a stop, it's not a midpoint, it's not gonna work. But if I click on the midpoint, you'll see here it says midpoint. Now I can change this to step and I can just continue to do this down the line. Until now we have our finished palette there. So now I can just grab another tool once I'm finished with that and that'll apply the gradient. And if I hit Control Shift A, you'll see now we have a really cool color palette here at the top of our image. And of course, if I hit Control Z and bring our selection back, 
I can create an outline around the edges of our selection area just to separate the uh, palettes that we just drew from the rest of the original image. And so to do that, I can open up my paths dialog box, so Windows Dockable Dialogs Paths, and I can come over here and click Selection to Path. So that'll create a path from our rectangle selection area that we drew. So I can unhide that and you guys can see it there. So I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect. And now I can paint along the border of this so I can come down here and click paint along the path. And I'll keep this at a solid color. And right now this is just gonna paint our foreground color. So let me double click and change this to something like a white and click OK. And you can choose your line width and I'll just click stroke. And now if I hide that path, you'll see our color palette has a white line separating it from the original image. So next I'll move on to our second example, which uses a different method for selecting colors from your image. So I'm gonna start by opening up that other image of the railway. So I'll go to File, Open Recent, and select my railway image. Once I've done this, I wanna open up a tool that's called Sample Points. And to do that, I'll just go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and choose Sample Points. So right now there's nothing going on right here, but what I can do is come over here to our rulers at the top. So you can either do it from the top or from the left side. But if I hold control and click and drag, that's going to bring these two guides together that look sort of like a crosshair almost. And now what I can do is just sort of drag and drop this to a place I like. And that allows me to select a color from my image. So I can hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel to see the color I selected. And if I don't like that color, what I can do is I can grab my color picker tool. And if I hover over this little icon that was created that also looks sort of like a little crosshair, I can click and drag this around until I get a better color that I like. So you can sort of see the color right here that you are selecting from. And you can just do that until you get a color you like. So I'll go with this color right here. And now I can hold control and I can grab another one of these markers here. So I'm just going to choose a similar color. So now you'll see we have sort of shades of the same color, which I'm calling burnt umber. I'm not sure how accurate of a color description that is, but that's what I see. And you can sort of move around your image and hold control, click and drag, and just find various points on here where there are prominent colors that really define this image. And so I'll just move around, hold control, click and drag. And we're gonna go with this sort of black color or very dark gray. Move around a little bit more. Maybe hold control, click and drag and select the color from this bark here where the light's coming in. And then hold control, click and drag. I believe I went with uh, this gray from the back here. All right, so we've selected our colors here and I just went with six colors. You can have more colors if you like. So let me just show you real quick. If I hold control and click and drag and choose a seventh color here, all you have to do is scroll down and you can see it. And all of these colors are numbered as you can see. So that makes it pretty easy to keep track of. I'll just hit control Z though, because I only want these six colors for now. And like the color picker tool with the eyedrop here, these colors have uh, little drop downs where you can change the color space you're looking at. So right now we're just looking at the pixels for the various color channels. So we've got red, green, blue, and alpha, which is transparency. And then you've got the X and Y location of the pixel. You can also change this to something like RGB percentage. And then you can see those RGB percentage numbers as well as alpha. And then you've got your hex code, which you can always highlight, right click, copy it, and then bring it to somewhere like over here where your foreground color is. And then just come over here and control V to paste. And now you've got that color set as your foreground color. All right, so once we have our colors, I'm gonna come back over here to our color palettes tab and I'm gonna create a new color palette and I'll name this one Railway Photo Colors. And remember that when we wanna create a new palette, we can create a new entry from the foreground color. Right now I have that foreground color I just created by using the hex code over here from our first color. So using that as our first color, I'll just click here to create that new palette. The issue now though is we have five other colors from our sample points that we selected. And I don't wanna sit here and copy and paste the hex code over and over again. So what I found was the easiest thing to do was to click on our foreground color, grab my eyedropper tool and just click over here on that color. And then just save that color here to your swatches panel. And you can just continue to do that for all six colors. So I'm just going to use the color picker tool to grab that color and then just save that to my swatches. And I'll just do that for these other colors as well. So now we have all five of the remaining colors here in our swatches panel. So I'll click OK. And now I can come over here to our custom palette that we're working on. And I'll come back to our foreground color and just change the color to that first color and click OK. 
and then I'll click to create a new entry from that foreground color. And I'm just going to do that for the remaining four colors. And I'm not really doing these in any particular order. So I'll do the black next and then I'll do this other color here next. And then I'll finish it off with our other gray and create that new palette. Once I finish selecting my colors and adding them to my palette, I'll come back over here to the palettes tab. Here is our railway photo colors palette that we just created. So I'll right click on that and I'll go to palette to gradient again. And now we have that palette set as our gradient. I'm gonna hold control and zoom out using my mouse wheel and I'll grab the rectangle select tool again. This time I'm going to be a little bit less precise when drawing this. I'm not gonna be as worried about having it uh, snap directly to the edges of the photo here. So I'll go with about right there. And now I'll grab my gradient tool and your custom gradient should be preloaded down here. If it's not, you can click on here and you could just find that gradient that you created and just click on it. So there we have it loaded now. And again, we can click and drag holding control to keep this in straight line mode. And I'll just draw this right to the edges holding control while I'm adjusting these. And I'll go to each of the midpoints here and change the blending to step. And that will create a hard edge between the different colors and help separate them. Now one thing you might have noticed between this color palette and the one in the last image is that the colors at the end are kind of getting cut off. You can always click and drag these endpoints in a little bit to try to even out the shapes uh, between the last color palettes here and the ones in the middle. And that just makes it look a little bit more even. Once you're ready, hit the enter key and that'll apply our gradient. So now we have a nice color palette here. And again, I can draw a path around this rectangle select area. So I'll go to my paths dialog, click to create a new path from the selection area. I'll unhide this, hit control shift A to deselect the selection area and click on here to stroke the uh, path that we just made. And I'll come over here and just make sure that the color of our stroke is gonna be white. And with the settings kept the same, I'll click stroke and now I'll just hide that path. And we have a nice white line separating our color palette from the rest of our image. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.